Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to give folks just a minute to log on and we will get started. In just a moment. Thanks for joining. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining this really important webinar today and happy Earth Month. Welcome to our Greening NYC Nightlife webinar. I'm Jose Sogard, Deputy Director for the Office of Nightlife. For those of you who don't know, we are a liaison between the city and the nightlife industry of businesses, workers, performers, and patrons. As always, if you have any issues or questions about your role in nightlife or anything that's going on with your venue or your events, please always feel free to reach out to us at nightlife at media.nyc.gov. Today's webinar is part of a series of courses we created called Night School or Nightlife Industry Training and Education. This is a new series to share resources and trainings for nightlife owners, workers, and patrons with sessions for how to best engage with city agencies, learn tips for proactive harm reduction, addressing quality of life issues, and more. You can find out more information at nyc.gov slash night school. That's, that's N-I-T-E, as you see on the screen, and we will also put a link in the chat. Today, we're happy to share with you a new resource and partnership with Future Meets Present, who are working to design and visualize a sustainable future. They are here today to present you some tips and strategies for how you can get started or go further to reduce the climate impacts of your venues and events. We're so excited to have them here today and to be kicking off this partnership with them. Before I introduce them to conduct the presentation, uh, just a few quick housekeeping notes. First, please use the Q&A feature in the Zoom to let us know any questions you might have throughout the meeting. And after the presentation, we'll have some additional time for Q&A as well. The meeting is being recorded and live streamed to Facebook, and a recording will be available to share with anyone you know who would like to view the training at a later time. Again, you can always visit nyc.gov slash night school, that's N-I-T-E school, as you see on the screen, to find information on other scheduled trainings, as well as previous webinars that have been part of this series. So now, without further ado, I would like to introduce my colleague, um, Amir Jandali is the CEO and founder of Future Meets Present, and I'm sure you will find his energy and enthusiasm as contagious as we do. So thank you so much for being with us here, uh, Amir, today. The floor is yours. Please take it away. Okay, there you go. All right. Audio coming in. We got my video. Let's see. I'll say, can we get my video going over here? Sorry, my video. We in. All right. Oh my God. Amazing. Here we go. First of all, thank you. That was such a beautiful introduction. This is so, so awesome. Let's see. We got 20 people on the call right now. Thank you everyone, everyone for joining. This is super cool. My name is Amir. Let me get my screen share going here for you. Thing. Oops. Excuse me, guys. Sorry. We actually just finished troubleshooting this. Let me share my right screen with you. Here we go. And play. There we go. All right. Are we in? It's good. Jose, can you give me a signal? Please. Yeah, that looks great. Thanks. Okay, amazing. Welcome everybody, this is super cool. I'm very, very excited and honored to be sharing with you what you will find to be um, both 
a little bit of a personal journey of mine and uh, a, a share, a discovery of how I found sustainability to get out of the silo of the granola conversations exclusively about exclusively about solar panels and how does it live and help us turn up a sustainable future. So what we have here is actually, uh, I asked AI to show us what does a vision of a sustainable future of nightlife look like? So we're gonna start here with this vision. I'm gonna take you on a little journey. So the theme of today, the real objective, my friends, is to demystify. Um, it can be so easy to think about sustainability as just big, broad topic that's just so hard to grasp, but the theme is to demystify climate solutions. And here's the agenda. So we're gonna do a quick welcome and a survey poll. I'm gonna introduce myself and Future Meets Present and how this came to be. I'm gonna introduce you to greenhouse gas emissions and demystify that world. We're gonna look at global climate goals, the Inflation Reduction Act, and how the global climate goals tie in with New York City regulations and visions. So we're gonna start really high level, demystifying climate solutions, and then contextualize that for New York City nightlife. And then we're gonna take a look at the nightclub of the future, which you got a glimpse of on the first slide. Finally, our call to action today is to join the Future Meets Present Nightlife Pilot Program. Here's some keywords and concepts to get us started. First of all, greenhouse gas emissions. I'm sure we've all heard about them, but quite simply, GHG emissions are planet warming gases they're emitted through virtually any human activity. The most common greenhouse gases are CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, fluorinated gases, and water vapor, actually, pretty interestingly enough. Now, CO2 is the one that we hear most about uh, because it's the most abundant, but they're all really important, um, especially methane, because although that gas is not as abundant as CO2, methane warms a lot more than CO2. So a little, we're going to get pretty nerdy too here just to set your expectations, but not, not too bad, don't worry. So that's greenhouse gas emissions. Next up, we have net zero. And this is quite simply, think about it like balancing your checkbooks. Balancing our greenhouse gas emission checkbooks. Um, it's a term that defines a future state where we're not emitting more emissions than we're able to draw down. So human activity causes emissions. In the future, we want to get to a point where we're able to balance, pull down emissions at the same rate that we're emitting them. So. That's net zero. And if this is already new, it's not new to you, uh, let this serve as a validation. Um, if it is new to you, uh, let it serve as the mortar between your bricks to help, help you grasp these concepts. So next up, we have 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is the unanimously agreed upon threshold of warming. Um, our collective goal as a species, as humanity, is to keep warming, global warming below this limit by 2050. We've already reached 1.1 degrees Celsius. So the clock is ticking, um, which means it is time for urgent action, which to me means it's a time for immense opportunity. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm incredibly just in awe by this moment um, that we get to see everything in our economy transform. So finally, this is not a term that's discussed too often, but for those, of, for those of us on the call today, I want us to think beyond net zero, not just balancing our checkbooks, but I want us to think about how to be drawdown aligned. And we'll, we're gonna nerd out about this a little bit more in, the, in, in a few slides as well, but it's not enough just to balance our checkbooks, but how do we align ourselves with that future state where emissions are going down? And drawdown aligned is, a business strategy that goes beyond net zero and utilizes all of an organization's economic, social, political capital to shift global culture to 1.5 degree scenario. And this is particularly important here for nightlife because we are culture makers. We're the sources of it. People come to nightclubs to celebrate, to loosen their ties, to enjoy, to dance. Um, it's a source of life. And nightclubs, nightlife can be an incredibly powerful lever to shift culture towards a 1.5 degree scenario. So it's a little bit of keywords and concepts for you. And um, now we're getting off to a little bit of a, of a 
of a rocky start here. It's a lot of concepts, but we're going to bring it down home. So before we get started, I want to get to know you. If you could take a moment, please, and scan our QR code. We have a few questions. We'll just give you a moment there. Just at least pull it up and then get some questions. Ask for us. I want to give a huge shout out to uh, my amazing interns, Clara and Ria, who put these survey questions together. Super stoked about that. And also, can we check, is the chat feature working? Jose, do we know if the chat feature is working? It is. Yes. Oh, Ria. Okay, there we go. Hi. Okay. Hello. Amazing. All right, cool. Now we're in the flow of things. Great. We can chat phones, panelists, Emily. Amazing, amazing. Only seen by hosts, hosts and panelists. Okay, cool. Well, I can call some of them out, but the chat is working. That's great. So if you got a chance to get to the QR code, amazing. We, I want to hear from you. If you can put in the chat and I'll read out a couple of these. What motivated you to come today? Hey, Mitch. <laughs> it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, what motivated you all to come today? You just put it in the chat. I'm sorry if you're like putting the QR code stuff into. Want to make change in the nightlife scene? Thank you, Sean. I care about the world. Yes. Planning for Earth Day events and Climate Week. Want to bring more community together. Love it. Yeah, we'll take another moment. I'm going to keep going, but. Please keep letting me know in the chat what you're, why you're motivated to come today. We need to make impact cool, yes, to learn and grow and make the world a better place. Amazing. Cool. All right. I'm going to keep it moving. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. So a little bit about me, y'all. I want to introduce myself and like, why am I even here talking to you right now? Why does this make sense? Why am I the person to be delivering this message? I'm from, excuse me small town in southern New Mexico called Las Cruces. It's a beautiful place. When I left Las Cruces, about 80,000 people, lovely town, uh, beautiful mountains in the background, amazing place to grow up. My family owned an Italian restaurant. So growing up, I always um, kind of had a blurred sense of what a stranger was. There was no such thing as a stranger. Everybody was family. It was a great place to grow up. Um, and now I moved to New York City. I'll tell you more about this in a little bit. But I have the honor of teaching in two universities here at Parsons and at John Jay. I teach uh, social entrepreneurship at John Jay and then also sustainable business models at the graduate school level at Parsons. And um, on one hand, we give students permission to feel and permission to create a for-purpose company. On the other hand, we analyze the role of the private sector in reaching climate goals. So this is um, what I'm up to now in addition to running an annual event during New York City Climate Week. This is um, the marketplace of the future we're one of the longest running consecutive events in Climate Week history. And for those of you who didn't know, New York City Climate Week is the largest one on the planet. We're the official vision partner for Climate Week. And um, yeah, so that's a little bit of what I'm up to now. But my background started here in the nightlife scene, Las Cruces, New Mexico. This actually is in El Paso. This is a music festival called Sun City Music Festival. And it was a beautiful time of my life. It was amazing. I uh, was, was so honored to share the stage with artists such as Chris Lake. I opened for him twice. Uh, not that bottom picture that, you know, that, that was all him. I let him take one down by himself. But the middle picture, um, you know, Chris Lake opened for him. There, I also got to open for other amazing artists like Avicii, actually, bless him before he passed away, as well as Eric Murillo, super house legend and hip-hop icon Lil Jon. So that was my life for about five years full-time. This is what I was doing. And 2013, I won best of the best of the El Paso, Las Cruces region, best of the best nightclub DJ. It was a re really amazing honor. And so that, that was the life, right? So this is my personal context and how it connects with this webinar today. So this is my personal context. And then one night, I had an experience that would come to change everything. I, I watched this documentary called Bag It about single-use plastic bags. And, and I think it was just, it was a heartbreak moment for me. And um, it's something I talk to my students all about. It's really important that we just slow down here for a moment and recognize that heartbreaks lead to breakthrough. Heartbreaks lead to breakthroughs. And, and three in the morning, I'm watching this documentary about plastic bags and 
And, and it was a heartbreak moment for me. I learned obviously about single use plastics and the amount of ending up in the ocean and the animals that are being harmed and that kind of thing. But the biggest thing for me, the revelatory moment was how did I not know about this before? How was I at the store yesterday and no one was reminding me to bring a reusable bag? Like, what's up with that? And then suddenly it felt like the apocalypse. And now the Greek definition of apocalypse, my friends, is not the end of the world. It is simply lifting of the veil. And my veil was lifted. And I, I saw the world for what it was and what it could be. Um, you, you could say it kind of felt like Hogwarts was real, all because of this documentary at three in the morning. And so that heartbreak galvanized me to do something. And that's when I moved to New York City and I got my master's in design for social innovation. And I was suddenly in a whole new world that I'd never would have thought I would be in, especially not one sitting behind a sewing machine. Because in grad school, we had an assignment and it was design a tool to solve a social issue. So I'm sitting there, I'm thinking about various ideas and finally it hits me. I want a solution to plastic bags and I want it to be a symbol of self-expression. I wore a lot of Livestrong bracelets at the time. I didn't have any bracelet that said anything about tote bags, but I didn't want a bracelet that just said bag. I wanted a bracelet that was a bag. I wanted a bracelet tote. So I Googled it. I didn't find anything. How often do you Google something and get no results? Never, right? So um, I, I worked on it until, until eventually I created it. So you can see here, I know I've got my background going on, but you can see I got this wrap around my wrist. And then it opens up into a tote bag, a usable bag, right? And then it's made entirely out of recycled materials, super easy to use, machine washable. You go like this and then pull it back together and then you have your bag. So that's what that started all because of that documentary that I watched at three in the morning, right? So the conditions were perfect for me to be experiencing this heartbreak about some semblance of normalcy in the world that suddenly was no longer normal. That was my heartbreak. That is a heartbreak when something that you think is normal isn't anymore. And I trust that we're all here on this call because we've experienced our own heartbreaks. And that's super important to recognize, super important to honor, because the whole world is undergoing its own heartbreak right now. And we're here because the nightlife sector can be an incredible opportunity for breakthrough. And that gets me freaking hype. So moving on from there, um, ended up selling several bags. Uh, I think we broke around 1,000 units. People really love them. And it was awesome. So now you have a DJ in New York City getting his master's in design, thinking about how to intervene in the world and like, what's my role? And how do we shift the needle? And how do we move culture towards? I didn't know really net zero at the time or drawdown or any of that kind of stuff, but I just, I, I knew I was like called by something, right? So I'm walking down the street in Times Square and I see an ad by Adidas, these shoes, Parlay for the Oceans. These shoes are made out of ocean plastic. And I look at this and I'm like, dang, these guys are making materials out of, products out of recycled materials too. So I'm not the only one thinking this way. The big boys are thinking about this too. So in that case, obviously this is what's gonna be normal in the future. So what I'm looking at is not so much an ad, but what I'm looking at is an indicator of what it looks like when the future meets present. And that just dawned on me right there. And that became this hashtag that I would use. And now it's the name of my company. So what does it look like when the future meets presence? And every time I would look and see ads like this or, or news articles like this, uh, a plastic ban, styrofoam, uh, Oregon State banning styrofoam, or the largest offshore wind farm is approved in Virginia, or US renewable energy surpasses coal. These are all signs, indicators of what it looks like when the future meets present. So now this is this context of contexts, if you will. It's kind of my mother worldview. And um, it all is really centered around this oversimplified graph. Now we talked about greenhouse gas emissions. We talked about drawdown. This is a chart showing two scenarios. Again, oversimplified, but for the sake of this conversation, imagine a chart showing rising greenhouse gas emissions and falling greenhouse gas emissions. If we implement solutions to climate change, logically speaking, at some point, those emissions will start going down. That moment, it's a moment in time, that moment is called the moment of drawdown. When someday we're gonna open up our phones in the morning, we're gonna look at Apple News and it's gonna say, 
we have reached drawdown. That is the moment in time in which emissions peak and begin going back down. And you see net zero by 2050 all over the place. This is what we're talking about. Everyone in the world is galvanized around this idea. Let's dive into this a little bit more, right? So if we're thinking back to our agenda, that was the intro about me, origins of future meets present, demystifying climate solutions and dream, demystifying greenhouse gases, okay? So let's jump to this right here. The common metaphor for greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere is a bathtub. Quite simply, you can think of it that way. And, and our objective is to not let that bathtub overflow, or in this case, overflowing means warm up to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Where is that water coming from? It's coming from six main sources, energy, transportation, food and agriculture, industry, buildings, and then other. Other simply represents um, leaky pipes and infrastructural issues like that. But the five other ones are the main sources of emissions, the main economic sectors that are creating all of the world's emissions. And if you think about it, there's a little flip there, nothing we do on a day-to-day -day life, in our day-to-day -day lives, escapes these categories. Transportation, you think about how we get around. Cars, trucks, maritime shipping, planes, buses, semi-trucks, everything to move us and our stuff around. Industry, we're thinking about the stuff that is getting moved around, the plastics, the metal, concrete, cement, glass, um, electronics, all the things like that stand for, it represent, are represented by industry. Food and agriculture, how we're growing our food, our soil's health, that entire ecosystem. We have energy, the electrons that are flowing through our cables, the ones that are allowing you to see and hear me right now. Buildings are built environment where humans spend most of our time. These are the categories, the sources of greenhouse gas emissions, right? So hold that framework in your mind. Now, take a step back. So what are the sinks of those emissions? If those are the sources of the water in the bathtub, what, is the sinks, what do the sinks look like? Simply, highest order categories, we have three sinks, land, ocean, and engineered. Land sinks, plants literally breathe CO2. We learned that in elementary school. And oceans, although might, you might not think of it, are a tremendous carbon sink. 70% of the Earth's surface is water. And the phytoplankton that is on the surface of the ocean has enough carbon capture potential to match all of the world's rainforests and forests combined. So between land and ocean, we need these ecosystems to be healthy and thriving so they can pull emissions out of the atmosphere because we're emitting them so much. Now we're at a point where land and oceans alone can't, can't, can't do it alone. Um, so we need engineered sinks as well. Now, this is a very emerging industry. It's not enough to move the needle by any means, but this is a huge, tremendous potential in the coming decade for direct air capture and literally sucking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Um, this is great, 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 great. I'm also just checking in the chat, please, like if anybody uh, has any questions or anything along the way, you know, just want to like gut check and make sure we're all good and moving forward at the same pace together. So let me go next here. Here's an oversimplification, a simplified chart of, of the sources and sinks. I'll let you take a look at that for a moment. Now, moving on, this is right here is probably about as nerdy as we're going to get. So don't, you know, don't worry. Uh, keep your hat on tight. Um, yeah, take a look at this. It's a little bit more of a granular zoom into the sources of emissions, right? We're starting really high level, and then we're going to bring it down to nightclubs. So, right, like look at an industry. You got 20%, 21% of global greenhouse gas emissions coming from industry. You got waste, chemicals, cement, cement, 3%. Now look up at transportation, flying. So the entire aviation industry represents 2% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Cement represents more emissions than the entirety of the avi aviation industry. When you really think of it that way, you start to be able to contextualize these solutions and see the raindrops from the clouds. It's not just this big, scary idea anymore, but you can look. And to me, this is very exciting because inherent to knowing the sources of emissions is knowing the sources of solutions. That's the beautiful reminder of this moment in time where all of these 
sectors of the economy get to be transformed. Here's those same categories reflected global uh, in a global landscape and in, in America. And while the categories are the same, the nuances and the proportions of them will be different based on the infrastructural needs and the cultures, et cetera. So there's global emissions, there's USA. Now there's New York State and here's New York City. It's tremendous, right? When you look at even New York City, I mean, it makes sense. We're nothing but buildings here. So 70% of our footprint comes from buildings. And now you are empowered with a context and a framework to be able to make sense of this content. So when you see headlines like Apple says more suppliers committing to renewable energy or the largest U.S. offshore wind farm is approved in Virginia, you know exactly where they fit into the pie. I hope that gives you a little bit of peace of mind that you can move through the world now with these new context lenses, be able to look and see everything. Oh, that comes from industry. Oh, that comes from energy. This is buildings. Well, that's food and agriculture. Great. I want you to be extra empowered by following up that, that inquiry, following that context up, the observation up with the inquiry of like, great, well, then who's working on it? You know, we don't want to be defeatist here and think that like, oh my God, everything's emitting emissions. For us, it's who's working on it and how do we turn them up? So what does that look like? I'm going to show you all now what I look to as one of my sources of truth. This is Drawdown. Uh, we, we heard the term earlier, but this is a nonprofit site. Um, they're the world's leading resources for resource for climate solutions. So take a look at this. If you explore Project Drawdown's website, a little screen recording here earlier. You can scroll down, you can look into the sectors. And just as we described them earlier, you see energy, food and agriculture, industry, transportation, buildings. We see the sinks, land and ocean sinks. We see engineered sinks. And then, of course, we see solutions around health and education, because what's the point of doing all this if, the, if we're not uplifting society? You can go on Drawdown's website, scroll through an entire library of solutions that you can see everything from composting, efficient aviation, electric trains, electric cars, forest protection, et cetera. Now, last thing I'll show you, and then we'll move into into um, contextualizing this for the nightlife. Let's go on a little thought experiment for a moment. Imagine that same chart of rising greenhouse gas emissions that splits into various scenarios. High, medium, medium, high, and low. So what we wanna look at is what's the desired future that we want, that net zero future. That future where all of those solutions that we just saw on the previous screen, where all of these are normalized. If we just shift our perspective, might we see indicators that that future is not far off in time and space, but is right here all around us? Might we look and see compost programs and electric vehicle charging stations and all these policies and everything that we're doing right here on this call? Might we see that all of those are indicators of that future expressing itself right in front of us? So if that's so, how are we gonna actually get there? And if you haven't heard of this already, the Inflation Reduction Act is the largest investment in climate action in U.S. history. It's the most significant climate bill in U.S. history, leading to a 40% reduction uh, in emissions. So this is this is tremendous. And this was passed last year. It's been, been worked on for the last couple of years. It's more than $300 billion that have now been mobilized to address these climate solutions, address these climate actions and implement solutions. So here's a quick snapshot of another pie chart. I'll just let you look at this for a moment. See where all this money is going. 64, almost $65 billion for renewable energy and clean energy investment tax credits. 36.85 billion in clean manufacturing. 13.17 for clean hydrogen. We see some for commercial vehicles and EVs, EV charging. So here's a quick snapshot of the emission reduction potential by the Inflation Reduction Act. So by 2035, we'll see that if the target by 2030 is 50%, by 2035, Inflation Reduction Act will take us to 40%. Not all the way there, but huge, huge potential. And that money is waiting 
to be given to people ready to implement those solutions. That's one of the reasons why we're here too. Taking us from global level, Inflation Reduction Act, now scoping it to New York State. This is New York State's scoping plan, and it is a body of strategies that will help New York City, New York State, and New York City obviously reach its net zero goals. And here's some of the highlights from the scoping plan that I want to share with you. High level goals. Take a look at that. It identifies actions needed for New York to receive 70% renewable energy by 2030 and 100% zero emissions electricity by 2040. It's moving, the gears are turning. A couple of more highlights. Achieving deep decarbonization is feasible by 2050. Every sector will see significant transformation over the next decade and beyond, which will require critical investments in New York's economy. Everything is about to transform. To me, that is tremendously exciting. Energy efficiency and end use electrification are essential parts of any pathway that achieves New York State's emissions limits. So this is important because I wanna take us as nightlife people out of the traditional ending plastics. That can, it's low hanging fruit and it's great and it's super important to get rid of straws and cups, of course. But we have to remember that nightclubs are buildings. And so we need to reframe that in our minds that now if we're really looking at systemic climate action as a nightlife, as someone in nightlife, you are in a building. So think about how your building can start reducing its emissions and let that cleaning of your own house be a galvanizing source to shift culture. So we see here approximately one to two million efficient homes must be electrified with heat pumps by 2030. This is, this is true for commercial real estate as well. Here's something else that's really great to know the cost of inaction exceeds the cost of action by more than $150 billion. So these reduction strategies result in improvements in air quality, increased active transportation, energy efficiency interventions, and low moderate income homes, which generate health benefits. It all makes sense. There's a principle that we live by a future meets present, which is true solutions are irresistible. And these are some of the indicators of that. And finally, hundreds of thousands of jobs will be created, 211,000 jobs expected to be created in growing subsectors by 2030. Okay, turning up nerdiness one more for those that now got activated by how buildings can play a role. By 2030, heat pumps will be the majority of new purchases for space and water heating. One to two million homes, 10 to 20% of commercial space using heat pumps by 2030 hundreds of thousands of additional homes, commercialized buildings becoming efficiently electrified each year. The 2050 vision for building sector sees 85% of homes and commercial building space statewide electrified, the diverse mix of energy efficient heat pump technologies and thermal energy networks. And now zooming in a little bit more to this, the scoping plan is like 400 pages. So yeah, we, 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 we come through with a fine tooth comb, but if you look down here under the strategy B9, this is y'all, this is us right here, right now, scaling up public awareness and consumer education. That's what we're doing. So the process has already started, right? Okay. Now taking a step back, remember those drawdown solutions we talked about a little bit earlier. Here's the moment where we can have the rubber meet the road and answer the question, what does it look like when the future meets nightlife? So our body of recommended strategies, the solutions that we see fitting in to this picture are as follows. High efficiency heat pumps, green and cool roofs, building retrofits, smart thermostats, reduced plastics, building automation systems, composting, photovoltaic solar panels, reducing food waste. So the club of the future will have these solutions integrated into their operations. And they will also serve as a galvanizing force for the culture and community around it, because that's what we do, period, anyway. 
So this is what it looks like when the future meets nightlife. And that there is money out there, out here to pay for it. So there's 1.8 billion ready to scale up solar, 6.8 billion ready to reduce building emissions. Here's some examples that we sifted through and found around the world. Cafe 1001 in London is a sustainable cafe and club that is powered by renewable energy sources and uses eco-friendly materials in its construction. It also has a focus on sustainability in its food and drink offerings using locally sourced and organic ingredients whenever possible. Omnipolos Hot, a beer hall that uses only renewable energy sources and donates a portion of, it, of their profits to environmental organizations. Finally, Silo London, UK, zero waste restaurant that operates under closed loop system, meaning everything they use is reused or recycled in some way. They even mill their own flour on site and use local seasonal ingredients. And there's plenty of options and models around us in New York City, like the House of Yes, which is really awesome. In Bushwick, they've eliminated single-use plastics and have partnered with Oceanic Global to reach uh, to gain an Oceanic Standard certification. So no plastics in their environment. They even have little recycling bins, uh, little recycling capsules for cigarette butts and that kind of thing. But it's a common understanding. It's a common sentiment that now what? We've done our stuff with the plastics and what do we do next? So um, that's what we're really here to, to demystify and to, to support you in, in doing. And so a quick snapshot of our, of our network as Future Meets Present. We work with New York City Passive House with Block Power who specializes in, in installing these heat pumps. Alloy Development is an amazing company we just had on a panel discussion. They're building New York City's first fully electric skyscraper. Uh, Novell is this company that's creating amazing, beautiful looking wall tiles that are actually batteries. They're set on your wall, really beautiful, and they're batteries for capturing energy from solar panels on your roof. Carbon Quest is a company that is installing carbon capture inside buildings for electric heat pumps, I mean, for gas burners, so that they capture the carbon emissions from those gas burners before they enter the environment. Just a little snapshot of people in our network that can support and people in our network that can support by signal boosting what you're working on. Uh, Impact Hub New York City, B Social Change, Earth Day Initiative, Climate Week NYC, the Carbon Almanac, and Drawdown Labs, our collective uh, community of partners all working towards the same goal. So if that's not enough, it's really important to remind ourselves that 21% 20, of customers will go out of their way to eat at a sustainable restaurant. And customers are demanding it. It'll increase your competitive advantage, opening and reaching new segments and increasing your employee retention and hiring. And working and acting on these things is simply the right thing to do. So here's a quick checklist for you. Feel free to take a screenshot, take a picture of this. These are things that you can do right away. If you're a club owner, if you work in the nightlife sector, if you have someone's ear, you can speak directly into their ear. Low-hanging fruit, stop all single-use plastics, compost everything, get a smart thermostat, install a heat pump. If you're a restaurant, add non-meat menu options, add sustainable alternative labels on your menu, convey the ethos of your beliefs through your storytelling. Brag about everything you're doing or going to be adopting. I love this. Join bartender competitions or even focus or events focused on sustainability and highlight the carbon impact of each meal. Just salad, if you go into any just salad around the country now, you'll see there's the salad, there's the price tag, and then there's the emissions label. So super cool. Last thing, your call to action right now is to join the FMP pilot program. We're partnering with a nonprofit called Protecting America that exists to create pipelines for that federal funding to reach small businesses and policymakers. So um, we're still in the early stages here, but we're looking for champions that want to step forward, that want our support, that would like to turn their work into a case study. Um, let us work with you to hold your hand, to map out the levers that you need to pull in order to become drawdown aligned. Let us create a roadmap together. Let's come up with an awesome case study and let's scale this up. There's several offices of nightlife around the world. So New York City can be the leader. We already are. And I think we can really make something amazing, amazing happen together. Super, super stoked. So that's going to wrap it up for us today. 
we have uh, an exit interview, an exit poll. Please, if you would be so kind as to pull your phones back out and scan this and um, answer some questions for us. But that's going to conclude our program today. Uh, appreciate you all holding the space, being here together for opting into this call. Uh, thank you for being with me on this on this journey and allowing me to share what has become a really beautiful integration of the all the things that are beautiful in my life and our lives. So very, very cool moment to be alive. Um, yeah, I guess we'll stop there. There's some stuff in the chat. Ariel, hey, that's awesome. I love it. Hey, Jose. Thanks so much, Amir. All right. And uh, thanks to everyone for coming today. I think we'll take a minute to see if anyone has uh, any questions. And um, Amir, I guess while we're waiting to see if there's any other questions, um, is there a way that folks can uh, reach out to you to uh, get connected to the the pilot you're you're working on? Yeah. There we go. Great. Yeah, and for those of you who would like to stay connected to our night school webinars, we're putting that link in the chat as well right now. Great. Okay. I'm still not seeing any other questions. So uh, we'd encourage you guys to uh, get connected to Future Meets Present. Uh, please take the, uh, the post-webinar survey that's um, on the screen right now on the QR code. Oh. I just want to thank everybody for coming. Um, you know, we hope you've been able to take away some helpful information from the session and that you can really start to take some steps to put some of these tips and resources into practice. So as always, feel free to contact us um, at nightlife at media.nyc.gov or follow us on social at at NYC Nightlife Gov. Mm -hmm. So thanks everyone for coming today. We'll leave uh, the meeting running for just another minute so folks can pull down any other uh, links or other info from the chat they need. Yeah, this is great. We're getting some awesome questions. I love it. Yeah. Are there any carbon calculators for drinks? Just like, uh, like just salad, but for cocktails, that is a great question. Yeah. I think it, this is so good. And thank you. Thank you all for your question. It's the, 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 the main objective here, honestly, this is our, this is our pilot too. You know, this is our first time um, exploring together with the office of nightlife and presenting this information in this way. And it is intended to be treated as a primer code. So as, as we hear the questions and thoughts and, and see what happens during this pilot program, uh, you know, the objective is to be able to come back and do an updated presentation with these questions, the answers to these questions integrated. Um, but it'll be awesome. The theme of today was demystification. So I really hope that that landed. Do you feel demystified, Jose? Very. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually feeling mystified. Okay. <laughs> Thank. All right. Uh, someone else asked for the, a PDF version of these slides. I can absolutely do that. Yeah. Uh, that was Alex. Thank you, Alex. Are there any data available through NYC or elsewhere that details how many buildings with nightlife businesses have committed to this work? I don't think so. Um, we don't have any sort of report where it's like, cool, all the clubs, these are the ones that are going green. Do we have anything like that? No, not yet. I think that's um, part of why we're initiating this partnership in this pilot. Awesome. Thank you, Diara. That's such a good question. We're gonna is Jose. Is there a way to like keep the stuff in the chat that log? Yeah, we have the full log. You have the full log. Perfect. So dump your questions, everybody. This is super helpful for us. Beautiful note here by a fellow DJ friend of mine. Um, so glad this webinar is happening. This was very informational. I don't have a question. Just want to add as a DJ in the nightlife industry, that is the incentives for applying sustainable practices isn't just for earth. It's for us having greener spaces in nightlife will help us all feel better without dancing in piles of trash or seeing the afterfall the next morning. Oh my God, seriously. Thank you, Jessica. I love it.
I'll uh, just go back to that as our closing slide. All right, I see some folks starting to drop off. I think um, just want to thank everybody again for coming and thank you so much, Amir, for your uh, enthusiastic and energetic presentation. We're so excited to be engaging with you in this partnership and look forward to uh, more to come. More to come. So, Perfect. Thanks, thank everyone. You all. all right.